Let's talk, talk about, about sex. Hi everyone, it's Chloe and Danny, and welcome to Tranny Tot Hot Dish. Today we are going to be talking about something that's a little steamy. A little steamy. Um, and just disclaimer: this video is not appropriate for anyone who is a minor or sensitive to um, things about sex. Or my coworkers, or my family, or my coworkers, or my family, and for my students, my fellow nursing students, if you're watching this um, and you don't feel comfortable um, listening to me talk about my sex life and my sexuality, tune then out and tune out, please. Um, but if Bye -bye. that's something that you're interested, go ahead and watch. Um, so we're gonna talk about sex. We're gonna talk about men that or at least men that we're interested in, our type of man, yeah. and sexuality, and how that all works mm -hmm. in the trans spectrum. Trans spectrum. I think spectrum is a key word, because yep. that's a very good way of de describing and talking about sexuality, too. Mm -hmm. And gender. Gender's and gender. a spectrum. I have a saying that, you know, and I kind of arrived at this at the end of my grad school experience, but, like... I came to the conclusion that the world does not work in black and white. It works in spectrums. And shades of gray. Oh. Especially in this topic. Mm. Which? There's more than 50 shades, just saying. I like a bunch of flavors. <sighs> so, on to the topic. Yeah. Let's talk about the kind of men that you're into. Whew. Well, I, um, I find that I'm in, like, into, like, so many different types of men, but, mm -hmm. you know, I love gingers, I love nerds, I like skinny, twinky, like, built, but slightly built guys, mm -hmm. I love jocks, um, so if you are, like, I love beards, so if you are, like, any mix of those, you are tattooed, mm. those are, like, my must-haves. Yeah. Like, if you encompass all of those, I'm going to come find you. Yeah. And I, I might just because I am yeah. now single. What? What? Beardo had to go. And that's okay. Single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. <laughs> um, for me... So, there's... I don't have an necessarily a type but there are guys that I see a consistency with mm -hmm. in my dating and my mm -hmm. um, sexual encounters we'll call mm -hmm. them um, so typically tall guys for me oh yeah tall for me is yeah. a must um, oh yeah I mean we're both kind, we're not super tall but yeah. we're tall we're tall like I'm you five put, nine I'm five ten you put heels on and you us. put heels on us and we're six three yeah so, so many tall ass men tall I've I've been, most of the men I've been with are over six foot two. I, uh, you know, I've dated some shorter men and, you know, I, I have no preference. I'm not opposed to short men. They pack a punch, I'll tell you that. They have good leverage. Oh. Um, oh. I typically, for me, I've been in relationships and dated, seriously, three, three kinds of men. So, tall and skinny, mm -hmm. kind of lanky and awkward. Which is, I like, um, really t like a tall and jockey. Mm -hmm. um, so I love me a good football player. I love me a good hockey lacrosse player. Ugh. Um, and then I've dated the kind of hipster, mm -hmm. um, longer hair, beard, tattoos, um, gauges. Yeah. And I love all three of those kinds of guys. Those are the three kind of main types of guys that I find myself attracted to. But... I'm definitely not exclusively attracted to those kinds of men because I what, a, what is what is like uh, thirty one flavors flavors of man Baskin manans it's like I, it doesn't matter like what type you are necessarily it just matters more like if I'm attracted to you I'm attracted to you yeah and and end of point yeah there's something to be said about connection and how much that plays a role into. What happens between us? Oh yeah, totally. So now that we've kind of <laughs> sorry, I'm just like looking at my eyes. Look at our eyes. <laughs> Talked about the kind of I guess physicality of guys that we like. 
Um, let's talk about sexuality. So, how do you identify? Okay, so before I transitioned, I identified as a gay male. Because mm -hmm. um, I didn't know what trans was, I didn't know what trans could be. So, I now, since transitioning, I identify as a heterosexual trans woman. If you want to use labels. <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty much exactly how I identify now. Before transition, I did identify as a gay man. Um, and after, or I'm still transitioning, so I can't say after. But she's, she's still woman. I'm still woman. Transition um, takes years. It does. And some so. people transition for all of their life. Yeah. But true. for me, I identify as a straight woman. I mean, for me, like, yes, trans is a part of my identity. But sometimes I just forget. Yeah. I don't know about, like... Sometimes during my everyday, I just forget about this whole trans thing because at the end You're of just the day, I'm, I'm myself. Yeah. Like, that's how I feel like, you know, I feel as if I'm a woman. I know I am a woman. And at the end of the day, yes, I started out at a different point than other women did. But I just feel that I'm a heterosexual woman. Amen. Something that Danny and I have kind of discussed a little bit in previous videos is that during transition, some trans women... Um, and men open up as far as sexuality is concerned. Mm -hmm. You're living by, you're not living by society's standards of gender, so why should you have to live by society's standards of sexuality? Exactly. Um, so that kind of crossing the line or, you know, living outside of the kind of mold, um, allows people to experiment with their sexuality. Mm -hmm. And something that maybe we both can talk about a little bit is um, what men who are attracted to us are considered. I know that's a, a that's a huge, strong that's like a huge question. That, that is a huge. I know my mom has asked, my grandparents have asked me, um, what are the men who are attracted to you? Like, who are the? How do the men you date identify? For me, most of them identify as straight. Mm -hmm. They're heterosexual males, mm -hmm. but some of them have been bisexual. Yeah. I think that the majority of men I've seen or been with say, identify as straight. Yeah. Um, and just because you're, just because you are, I'm speaking specifically to, to heterosexual males out there, just because you are possibly interested or attracted to someone who may be trans doesn't mean doesn't make it it doesn't make you gay. doesn't make you not straight <clears throat> because to be honest so, I mean there are some men who like trans women for their past and what they may have downstairs mm -hmm. but most men who are attracted to us are attracted to us because we're feminine because we yeah. are women because yeah, we, we live every day energy we yeah. women so they're not a lot of men identify as straight who see us and mm -hmm. I mean that's who I mostly see me too um, I have been with a couple bisexual men. Um, I think like two or three. I've dated some polyamorous people too. And that's another thing that we can talk about Poly forever. Polyamory. Yeah. Po polyamory is basically where you're in a relationship with someone and both of y'all date other people at the same time. But yeah, so there's a slew of different sexual terms that you can... Um, throw, oh, pansexual is what I was oh, talking yeah, about. Oh, yeah, pansexual. Like, pansexual. They have sex with pans. <laughs> no, yeah, my favorite's cast iron. No. Um, <laughs> my no. favorite is tea fowl. Oh, God. I love those rubber, rubber handles. God, <laughs> ew. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so there's a slew of different sexuality terms out there. Yeah. But I can say from personal experience, and I'm sure Danny can agree with this, mm -hmm. most of the men that we date or see are heterosexual. Yep. Yeah. And continue to identify as that after they see us. Mm -hmm. um, so, now with that out of the way, let's talk about sex. Mm. Baby. Let's talk about you, you and me. Let's talk, talk about, about all the good things and the bad things that will be. Let's uh, talk uh, about uh, sex. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Sex. Um, this like I said in the very beginning of the video, is going to be something that may not be a topic of interest for everyone. Okay, and so are we going to start this section of the video with, like, the question that's, like, on everybody's mind? Sure. Probably watching this video right now. 
are you a top or, or are, are you the, the bottom? bottom? So that's often a question that, you know, people ask. Um, pre-op trans women. Mm -hmm. um, well, for, the first question is, is, have you had the surgery? Yes. Like, like, like it's proper for me to walk up to someone and, and like, ask about hey, genitalia. do you have a vagina? Yeah. So. Pull down your pants. Let me see your downstairs no. mix up. Well, that's something to think about is yeah. when you're addressing a trans person about sex, you mm -hmm. need to address them as you would any other person. Yeah. I'm not going to go up to a person and start a conversation about genitalia. Yeah. That's just not proper etiquette Yeah, for anyone. So... If you do that with any of us, or I'm sure any other trans women, um, there's going to be a you. likelihood no, that you're not going to get any. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, with that, out of the, with that out of the way, um, topping and bottoming. Um, for trans women, some trans women um, don't experience dysphoria with their genitalia, mm -hmm. And they're fine. So their transition goals don't include getting bottom surgery. Mm -hmm. And some trans women are completely fine with using that. Mm -hmm. um, so with their partners, they have sex with them. Um, if you want to say pen you, they, they use their original genitalia for penetration. Yeah. Um, some trans women don't do that. Um, yeah. Some trans women who still experience dysphoria about that. And for those of you who don't know what dysphoria is... It's a feeling of, like, othering or, like, like not belonging or discomfort with um, your gender or your genitalia. So, or your physicality or your because physicality. of your gender. Yeah. And so some, I know, I mean, for me, I can speak for myself. I do experience a lot of dysphoria with regards to my, well, my gender expression before I transitioned. But now it's a lot of my um, plumbing. Genitalia. My yeah. genitalia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, here. um, but some trans women do, Oops, sorry. um, experience dysphoria about that, but still with the right partner, maybe a partner they know or a partner they feel comfortable with will switch roles. So yes. you can be a dominant, you can be submissive, mm -hmm. you can top or bottom. You can be, you can throw um, or you can catch. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, something that echoes through trans women is some people, if they're comfortable with the person that they're with, will do that. Yeah. Um. But it's about developing that comfort level. You can't just... You can't just, like, on the first date or, like, on the whatever date it takes for you until you have sex, be like, hey, mm -hmm. stick it in me. Yeah, that's... It's a comfort level. And mm -hmm. especially with trans women who experience dysphoria. Because that's something that they don't feel comfortable with, you know? That's, that's something that often makes them feel or may make them revert to feelings in the past... Of that otherness, that foreignness, mm -hmm. that discomfort with that gender, that because that topping so, is often associated with masculinity. Yeah. So what what you're saying is is that we're already in a world where we're otherized and we mm -hmm. um, feel as though sometimes that we're not like other women. Mm -hmm. So for us. Assuming that role as the bottom, as the catcher, as the... Which women don't have to be submissive. No, you can Women can be totally strong... Dominant. Dominant women outside it, of yeah. the bedroom and take it. You know? Well, That's how we are. Yes. So, getting to the point. Um, some of you... This is going to be <laughs> so awkward. Um, it's it's sexy. For me, we all do it. Yeah, this is something that we I all poop. I want you know, everybody poops, everybody have sex, has sex. Um, this is something that I just kind of want to talk about because there's such a stigma around sex and having sex and being sexual. Um, as and this, there is a lot of stigma surrounding having sex with a trans, trans person, woman. yeah, trans person. Trans um, woman. and this is just something we want to talk about and have a conversation about because it's not. It's, it's having sex is not a bad thing. No. Having having urges having is urges not is thing. not a bad thing. Talking about sex is not a bad thing. But the Christian roots of of the society mm -hmm. have often um, kind of stigmatized that and put a negative spin towards sex. But mm -hmm. having an open conversation about sex is only going to make everyone an added mm -hmm. everyone's attitude and. Everyone's attitudes and behaviors about sex healthier. Yeah. 
So it's a little bit of education. A little bit of education. Trans-centric. Um, trans education. Trans education. Yeah. Um, so for us, we are both, I mean, very dominant personalities. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say, I, I know for me... You're definitely... I am... I am a power woman. I definitely, outside of just me performing myself in the world, I am a go-getter. I'm an achiever. I will speak my mind. I'm not afraid to say things, um, even at the risk of hurting someone's feelings. I am, you know, I'm a dominant woman. I can say that 100%. But... And I'm dominant. Yeah. But just in different ways. Just in different ways. I'm just a very straightforward, in-your-face kind of person. Um, she definitely can be that way, too. I've seen it. It's kind of funny. Um, what? <laughs> you be very direct with someone. <laughs> um, fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> um, but, you know, that role <clears throat> doesn't necessarily translate into how, we, how our sexual lives work. Mm-hmm. For me, um, feeling like... A woman and being a woman and always feeling that way and really always performing in a feminine way for me in the bedroom that's how I am I'm more submissive I'm more um, I don't really like to take that masculine role and top because it's not something that I'm comfortable with um, I, I have this discussion with the men that I sleep with and the men that I date um, that that's just not something I do and well, also some guys, from, like, a physiological standpoint, like, being on estrogen for and testosterone blockers for a duration of time... It just, it doesn't work it changes. Anymore. It changes the way that you have sex. It changes the way your member, whatever you want to call it down there... Your, your, your lady, lady thing. Sometimes I, I, call, I call it a lady my, stick. I call, I call it my pussy. Yeah. I call it my pussy sometimes, too. I always call it my pussy. <laughs> it, it changes the way that you use it. Yes. I mean... It starts acting more like a vagina. It does. And, <laughs> and your, your, um... The slap sexual <laughs> Your sexual urges completely change. Yeah. After, your sex drive changes after you've been on estrogen and testosterone yeah. blockers. I will 100% say... The way that you have that an orgasm changes. changes. It goes from being localized to being, to like, being full, full body. To being full body. Yeah. Um... And just, I would say 100% my sex drive has dropped so much since I've been on estrogen. Okay, so I kind of had like an increase in my sex drive, like maybe about nine, nine months, nine or ten months in. And it lasted for a good while, like several months. And I think now that I'm on a different type of estrogen, because there's different type of estrogens that you can get out there, um... Now that I'm on a different type, it's just more like, it's calmed down, like, a lot. Yeah. And so, I think... It's like a cat in heat. um, Well, I was at that point for a couple weeks, too, in this past month. It was bad. But, (laughs) overall, I think what we're trying to get at is, every trans woman is different. We're speaking from our personal experience. But, when talking about sex, it's like everyone else. Get comfortable with a person. Um, Even if you're hooking up. Be polite. Talk about what you're comfortable with. Talk about what you're not comfortable with. And yeah. as you develop a relationship or in the moment, you may do something different. But it's still important to know that trans women are just like any other woman. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to have sex with them, you still need to treat them as if you would treat someone, but any other sexual partner. And I just have to add that, like, for people who are trans curious or people who won't happen to fall upon someone who's trans that they're interested in dating, it's okay to ask questions. It's not about the type of question that you're asking. It's, it's about the way you're presenting you the question. For all the trans curious men out there, um, if you are curious in a trans woman or know a trans woman that you may feel like you want to be intimate with, let's talk about how you ask questions. Okay. Okay? So we're just going to run for, through some things. So talking about genitalia. There are ways to ask. You can say, are you pre-op or post-op? Or, do you have a penis? Do you have a dick still? Do you have a dick? There's a, there's, see, there's different ways of saying it. Or, are you or, 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 are you a she-male? I fucking hate that question. No, do if not. You, if you use she-male, if you use tranny, if you even use transsexual. Or, are you a trans? No. Are you, 
Were you, are you are you a transgender? No, it's a transgender woman, a trans woman. Or are you transgendered? Yes, that's it. Yeah. So ask, are you pre-op or are you post-op? If you have that kind of relationship, if you don't really know someone, that's really not an appropriate question to ask. Exactly. But if that's an if you're at the level where intimacy may happen, that is an appropriate question to ask if you're in if you're wondering what they may be working with. So do you have an any or do you have an Audi? <laughs> I've never heard that one. <laughs> That's a kind of cute, funny way of I don't know how I would feel about that. True. I would um, probably laugh and then be like, um yeah. yeah. What surgeries have you had? No. <laughs> False. Is that your real nose? <laughs> or starting a conversation like that, like Talking about body parts. Body parts. It's yeah. just not a good thing in general. Get to know the person firsthand. Mm -hmm. And you know the the person that you're on a date with or like talking to, just just try and get to know them first. And then these questions, they may answer themselves. And as long as you are polite or preface that you don't know about this, yeah. and your questions may totally come fine. off uneducated or maybe a little intrusive, as long as you preface... Like, I'm sorry, I'm really not educated about transgender women or yeah. trans women. Yeah. Um, and I have some questions. Would you feel comfortable answering my questions? There's a difference between between being ignorant and being discriminatory. Yes. Ignorance is just, just means that you lack the knowledge. And being discriminatory is you are talking to this woman because she's a trans woman. And just and evaluating just, her. Yeah. Her identity. Her personal feelings about who she is. Exactly. So that's just kind of an overview about what, a very, very quick overview about sexuality, how we have sex, the men we like to have sex with, and how to talk about sex with a trans woman. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Ah, if you guys have any other questions, baby. please feel free to <laughs> leave them down in the comment box. And as always, we love you guys. Love you. Thank you for tuning in. And I'm Chloe. I'm Danny. And this is Tranny Tot. Hot dish. Bye. Bye.